Now, their weather pattern is dried out a bit. They've had more than a week of dry weather. Rain returning to California after eight days. You'll remember the Pacific coastline just drenched, right? The atmospheric river set up. These are some of the numbers, the totals since Christmas Eve. Finally, they've had a decent dry stretch, recovering from this flooding and all of the wet weather. Their soil's no longer mush. They can kind of recover from it. But all of the pictures, uh, because of the rainfall, led to sinkholes, washouts, mudslides. Mind-blowing to think that 32 trillion gallons of water was dumped on California between December 24th and mid-January. The rain comes back. But this round does not look serious. Instead, it's a more traditional January wet weather pattern. Of course, this is the wet season for SoCal. LA, you expect to get a little rain. You know, when they say it never rains in California except for the end of January is the traditional rain event unless you get an atmospheric river setup, which is what we saw. This but is just regular old rain, mm -hmm. though, which is a whole lot different than those atmospheric rivers when we saw, what, nine or ten consecutive events, which led to just staggering amounts of water and snow in the high terrain. This is completely manageable, thankfully. After that eight-day pause, as you were pointing out, this is just mark it down as, as bonus precipitation because you picked up everything that you need already, and now any more moisture through what's left of the rainy season, which isn't all that long, uh, will be very impactful moving forward for drought concerns. Of course, we still have all that water equivalent stored up in the snowpack. Yeah, certainly it's soggy in L.A. over the weekend. Temperatures cool a bit. But, Britta, I think one of the major headlines that came out of the AR pattern, the atmospheric river pattern, is the drought and that change from extreme category bringing the numbers down and allow, sort of alleviating a little pressure, if you will, from all of the restrictions that Californians have had to face because of the lack of water. Yeah, and it does impact your daily life. I mean, you're talking about anything from how much water you're allowed to use to water your lawn to what's allowed in your front yard. Literally, you might have to rip out the grass and put in stone in some of these locations out west. Uh, so this is really encouraging to see. Backing up before the AR events, uh, beginning of December, look at how much drought was really around the state wow, of California. Wow, that's a great comparison. I mean, it, it's proof in the pudding right there. I mean, we went from having a large percentage of California in extreme and just exceptional drought. And then as we go after the event, today's latest numbers that are actually from yesterday, we get the update every Thursday morning. You know, we're down to just a couple pockets here. We have one pocket of severe drought in Northern California, another pocket down here. The rest of the state, anything under severe for California is like a no deal. I mean, it's something that you concentrate on. But again, when you're talking about drought, it's the extreme, the exceptional that really changes how you live your life. Now, 90% of the state is still in drought. And that isn't something Thing to take lightly. It is an issue, but the fact that we have 0% of extreme and exceptional, which three months ago we had 43%, I mean, to change 43 percentage points in three months is incredible. And again, most of that happened in a six week window. Also, this is an interesting point. Look at mm -hmm. our reservoir level. Now, most of our reservoirs out west, they fill up because of the snowpack melting. They don't necessarily fill up because of the rain falling from the sky. Any given rainy season, you're looking at the melting snowpack, but we've actually seen the reservoirs come up, which is a good sign in itself. But look at just, you know, Lake Oroville, for example. We're sitting above the average fill height of 56 7% of the reservoir being filled up. So many people, when they think about reservoirs, they're like, oh, well, it's full all the time. No, reservoirs sometimes actually can be completely dry. We actually see that in Houston all the time. We have a massive reservoir that's actually a park, but it's there because eventually it can fill up during certain, you know, times of the year. California is very different because there's reservoirs. They're holding onto the water so we can get through the dry season. Half of the year in California is meant to be dry and we have to live through it. And that's why we have the reservoirs in place. So the fact that we're above the average fill already just with rain is great because when we melt the snowpack, it is going to be awesome. The only thing here, and Ian, you brought it up a couple times, is we need a slow snow melt. If we all of a sudden have temperatures that skyrocket in the Sierra 
coming up this spring. Big problem. Then it's like wasting gold. Mm -hmm. And also, not only are you wasting gold, but you also can have an extreme amount of danger with mudslides, landslides, avalanches, mm -hmm. you name it, you have massive things that happen. And, you know, our meteorologist Brian just got in my ear too, talking about, you know, the threat of melting the snowpack with a rain event. What they're seeing this weekend, those snow levels around 4,000 feet that we're going to see this weekend, that's no big deal. But if you have a snow level come in with a spring system and you have rain that's hitting 7,000 feet then and you're sitting there with yeah. a massive snowpack, that is a huge problem. What's remarkable too about what happened over that several week period is that as much rain that fell, there's almost an equivalent amount of that now stored up in the snowpack. Mm -hmm. We saw the video of what that much rain that quickly did. You can have a similar situation that develops if we had a rapid melt. A rapid melt, mm -hmm. yes. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.